Hello, Josie Wales here and welcome back to this combat mission, Battle for Normandy After Action Report. This is part two of the Lonsdale's Block scenario where I am playing head to head against Pericles of the Battlefront forums. Pericles has his own YouTube channel called Rational Assessments and there is a link to that in the description below. So jumping straight in, on the far left, 2nd Platoon of 250 Company try and break through on this flank. After some initial success, the Germans are defending in depth and progress forward is proving difficult. Near 5 points, 250 Company's 1st Platoon get a fingernail grip on the objective. Four and a half inch strike is called in on TRP2, but several shells go wide and friendly casualties are sustained. At the centre block, a Stug 3 is causing problems. As the remnants of the 3rd Parachute Battalion begin to break under the strain, fresh troops of the 1st Parachute Battalion enter the fray. The Germans are really pushing for this objective. However, the Stug which took the two Piat hits seems very quiet. 4th Platoon's leader is the sole survivor of the close quarter combat in the TRP-1 block. He pulls back to the school. Just as more Germans are spotted going in. On the right, surviving Stug on this flank has positioned itself behind some high hedgerows.
That's now two Stugs down. The German tank is spotted moving along the road through East Block towards the church. I initially identify this as a Panther and realise I am in serious trouble on this flank. However, I quickly realise my error and correctly identify the tank as a King Tiger. I upgrade my assessment to actually being in serious, serious, serious trouble on this flank. The Piat team in the church attempts to get a bead on the tank. Fat chance of that. Further back, the jeeps are proving useful for the quick redeployment of the heavy machine guns. And on the far right, one of the sea troops pack howitzers shells a German MG position. Strategic update 3, 0924 hours, 24 minutes into battle. On the far left we have 250 Company of the Royal Army Service Corps. With 2nd Platoon attempting to break through on the left edge of the map. And 1st Platoon harassing the 5 points objective. To their right is G Squadron. Although 1st Flight are also aiding with the push on the left flank with second flight mostly being kept in reserve as our third flight on the right. In the centre, third battalion have been whittled down to just a handful of troops with first battalion becoming more committed with the centre defence. First platoon are staying in reserve on the left with second platoon fighting it out for the centre block objective. 3rd platoon hold the school district. Holding the right are the South Staffordshires. With 11th platoon moving to support 3rd battalion at the school. 12th platoon are seeking cover from the rampaging King Tiger and have currently borne the brunt of its attack. 9th platoon are still holding the observation post objective but are also seeking cover from the tank and 10th platoon are still being kept in reserve. The Sea Troop pack howitzers have now found better firing positions on the right flank, with the single howitzer from F Troop repositioning on the left. The leftmost AT gun has found some infantry target, but the Stugs on this flank remain out of its line of fire. The 6 pound on the right has claimed a Stug, and although covering the King Tiger's approach, it is unlikely it will do any damage unless it gets a hit on the tank's side. The disposition of the enemy armour is as follows. One Stug is on the five points objective. There is potentially another assault gun just to the east of it. Although it has not been spotted, something has been shelling the centre block from this vicinity. The Stug on the centre block has been hit twice with Piat rounds, and I'm wondering if its main gun is out of action. The South Staffordshires took out the first Stug with a Piat round and the support element took out the other one with a six pounder gun. 
However, the subsequent arrival of the King Tiger on this flank did not diminish my opponent's firepower for long. On the left, 250 Company 2nd Platoon and G Squadron's first flight attempted to break through. However, the Germans have good positions in hard cover and are easily brushing off any attempt I make to advance. I may need to forget about breaking through here altogether and redeploy these troops where they can be of more use before they become combat ineffective. At the centre block, 2nd Platoon of 1st Battalion have been squeezed into a handful of buildings at the southern end of the objective. My opponent's infantry have occupied the building complex at the northeasternmost end. The unseen assault gun has been shelling the northwestern buildings, forcing me to abandon them. The most likely move my opponent is to take these two buildings. With fire support from infantry and machine guns to the east, they will tighten the noose on 2nd platoon even further. 1st platoon are still in reserve, but can be used to counter the German push when the time is right. On the right flank, my main problem is finding the best way to deal with the King Tiger. Its 88mm gun is slaying everything it can get a line of fire to. The 6-pounder and pack howitzers won't be able to damage this beast from the front, but might have a chance if my opponent presents one of its flanks. I opt for a defensive strategy and the troops defending this flank have pulled back behind the buildings, smoke from the mortars will be used in an attempt to blind the tank. The status of the objectives remains unchanged, I have not been able to hold on to my fingertip grip on 5 points. The battle lines currently look like so. One final push is attempted on the far left by 250 Company 2nd Platoon. But it's no use. The attack is called off. The fire maneuver is used to withdraw the embattled troops until contact is broken. Behind them, smoke is used to conceal the deployment of F Troops Pack Howitzer. On TRP2, the barrage comes to an end. And with supporting fire, the five points objective is reoccupied by G Squadron's second flight. On the east side of the objective, a German infantry platoon is spotted in the open. First battalion engaged from the centre block with enfilading fire. The elusive fifth stug is spotted in the middle of five points. This one is equipped with a 105mm howitzer. At the centre block, German infantry continue their attempt to push 1st Battalion off of the objective. One team from 2nd Platoon decides to push back. The team caused six German casualties and the sole survivor sprints back to friendly lines. As reinforcements move in, further German encroachment into the centre block is temporarily halted. 
On the right, smoke is used once again, this time to blind the King Tiger. However, the tank has repositioned and is now targeting near the school district. Under its covering fire, infantry start to approach the school. But they are quickly seen off by 1st Battalion's 3rd Platoon. With the King Tiger preoccupied, a Piat team from 1st Battalion's AT section uses the smoke to manoeuvre forwards of the church. However, the respite for the South Staffordshires doesn't last long. Additional smoke is used to conceal the redeployment of one of Sea Troop's pack howitzers. Strategic update 4, 0930 hours, 30 minutes into battle. On the far left, 250 Company 2nd Platoon and the Company HQ have withdrawn from contact. 1st Platoon are supporting the attack on the 5 points objective. G Squadron's first flight were involved in supporting 250 Company. On the left, they have taken substantial casualties including their platoon leader and have been reduced to little more than a squad. Second flight are leading the attack on five points and third flight are occupying the ground between the two objectives. Towards the rear of this flank, F Troops Pack Howitzer is deploying concealed by smoke from a two inch mortar and behind them are five jeeps belonging to F Troop and 250 Company. In the center, despite my opponent's attempts to push me off the center block objective, the remnants of third battalion have managed to hold on with support from first battalion. On the left, I have managed to keep the majority of 1st Platoon in reserve, with 2nd Platoon supporting the 3rd Battalion remnants on the centre block. 3rd Platoon still have the school district secured. And a heavy machine gun from the support unit has been deployed to aid the defence of the centre block. On the right, the South Staffordshires are still holding, with 11th Platoon aiding in securing the school district. Despite the smoke and attempts to hide, 12th Platoon have taken a beating from the King Tiger. They have lost their platoon leader and been reduced to squad size. 9th Platoon are faring better and still hold the observation post. 10th Platoon have moved one squad forward with the rest staying in reserve. Now that the 250 Company and G Squadron troops have broken contact on the left, they are ideally positioned to quickly embark on the five nearby Jeeps. This will allow me to quickly redeploy this small force to reinforce the center to ensure my original plan of holding three of the objectives persists. Zooming in on five points, we can get a better look at the G Squadron positions. Second flight have occupied the southwestern end of the objective. As well as facing off against large numbers of German infantry, two Stugs are also active in the objective, one of which has a 105mm gun. Third flight are attempting to put pressure on the Germans in the center block. My opponent's push on the center block was initially successful, with two of the buildings to the east of the objective secured and a team of German infantry lined up ready to assault the center box-shaped building. However, a devastating counter-attack from a three-man team from 1st Battalion 2nd Platoon killed several Germans and sent the rest packing back to their start line in the northeasternmost building. The nearby Stug has had ample opportunity to fire both its main and secondary armament, but has remained quiet. I am confident now that this is a toothless hulk. Behind the South Staffordshires, I am waiting for the smoke to clear to allow 3rd Troop's anti-tank gun to get line of fire to the King Tiger. Although unlikely to cause damage by itself, 
I am attempting to also get one of C Troop's pack howitzers deployed before the smoke clears so that I can overwhelm the tank crew and perhaps panic them into pulling back or better yet, bailing out. I am still in possession of the school district and the observation post. My opponent still has the east block, but now both the centre block and five points objectives are currently contested. The battle lines look like so. On the far left, 250 Company 2nd Platoon mount up in the jeeps. One of the jeep drivers is hit. However, the other four jeeps managed to redeploy their passengers to the school district. On five points, the battle heats up. As one of the Stugs pulls back, 250 Company's 1st Platoon moved to the objective to support G Squadron's depleted 2nd Platoon. Smoke is popped into the road to facilitate a crossing to the other side. However, a small German attack delays the manoeuvre. Then one of the Stugs reappears, forcing the platoons to displace. In an attempt to get under the smoke before it fully dissipates, 250 Company's first platoon make a dash across the road. It's an ill-fated manoeuvre. Only a handful survive, and the slaughter causes G Squadron's 2nd platoon to lose their nerve and pull off of the objective. 1st Parachute Battalion's 1st platoon are finally committed to the centre block, as are the rest of 2nd platoon. Pushed by the two platoons, catches the remaining Germans in the centre block in a crossfire. Within seconds, they are routed out of the northeasternmost building and off of the objective. Positions that were in German hands only moments ago are now occupied by 1st and 3rd Battalion elements. But with help from the guns, the centre block is secured. However, the occupying force is weakened and I fear a counter-attack is imminent.
Opposite the school, a team from third platoon scout over to the TRP1 block. But they get more than they bargain for. The German squad have been lurking in the block, preparing to attack the school district. Covering fire is provided by 1st Battalion to allow 11th platoon of the South Staffordshire's to move in and disrupt the pending attack. Demo charges are laid on the outer wall of the room housing the Germans. The first charge goes off to good effect and the second one finishes the job. However, this turns out to be more than just a mopping up exercise as another German squad pours into the block. Casualties are heavy on both sides. However, as more Germans rush in from the east, so do more paratroopers from the west to prevent a build-up of units that could threaten the school district. As the slaughter continues, it proves too much for some, and reinforcements from 250 Company which arrived from the jeeps are sent in. More and more German reinforcements continue to pour in and I am surprised at how much strength my opponent has left. I consider the price paid for contesting the TRP1 block. It has been high, however the school district remains secure. The King Tiger is still conducting its reign of terror on the right flank. However, as the smoke starts to clear, the six-pounder anti-tank gun gets a spot on it. As the tank withdraws, the AT section Piat team push forward. And whilst waiting for the rest of the smoke to clear, the leftmost howitzer targets a German machine gun. Despite the hits, the King Tiger is still fully operational. The Piat team waits for the right moment. gun goes down. To 
Despite the rampage of the King Tiger, the observation post objective is still held. Given the current strategic situation, I asked Pericles if he would consider a ceasefire. My force is all but spent. I am scrabbling around for jeep drivers, surviving gun crews, battalion HQs and their supports to throw into the meat grinder. My main concern is a counter-attack onto the centre block, which I do not think I could hold off. I would agree to stop contesting the five points objective if he would call off his attacks on the centre block, school district and observation post. He agrees to these terms and a ceasefire is declared. It takes a few turns to enact in which I suffer a few additional casualties but nothing compared to those suffered in recent turns. And it's a draw. I have 246 men okay and have taken 232 casualties. Pericles has 445 men okay and has taken 294 casualties. He has had two of his Stugs destroyed and I did lose two guns but they have not shown up in the listings. I have secured three of the objectives totaling 300 points and have also been awarded a total of 59 points for destroying enemy armour and infantry. Pericles holds the five points and east block objectives and gets a total of 200 points for them. He has also been awarded an additional 37 points for casualties inflicted on me under the targets bonus plus an additional 100 points for casualties inflicted under the parameters bonus. Making the total points 359 for me and 337 for my opponent. Not quite enough to get a tactical victory. Looking at the map we can see on the left that the force ratio is well in favour of my opponent. Located within and to the northeast of five points is quite a substantial camp group and closer inspection reveals good quality troops in excellent order. One of the Stugs on this flank has been abandoned and I'm guessing that's probably due to a damaged gun from a Piat round. Looking at the centre, it seems as if my concern about an imminent counter-attack on the centre block was unfounded, as German units here are under strength and demoralised. The Stug, which had been hit by two Piat rounds, did not fire another shot after that. It had been abandoned by its crew. By the school district, my initial scout into the TRP block uncovered a German force building up to attack. Uncovering this build-up allowed me to undertake a pre-emptive attack with 3rd platoon of 1st battalion and 11th platoon of the South Staffordshire's as reinforcements from 250 company arrived in the jeeps to also take part in supporting the attack. The right is where the South Staffordshire's stood their ground despite the arrival of the King Tiger which caused 21 casualties and took out one of the pack howitzers in the closing minutes. In spite of multiple hits from that howitzer and a 6 pounder anti-tank gun only the radio was damaged. Zooming back out, we can see the centre block, school district and observation posts under my control and the five points and east block under Pericles' control. I think my main strategic mistake was limiting myself to occupying just three of the objectives, thinking that that would be enough to secure victory. In hindsight, it can be seen that contesting one of the other two objectives would have been necessary to achieve such a victory. The final battle lines look like this. My primary tactical mistake occurred on the five points objective towards the end of the battle. G Squadron's second flight and 250 Company's first platoon occupied the southwest corner of the objective. German infantry and two Stugs occupied the eastern end with some infantry out in the open on the right. Smoke was deployed into the street to facilitate a manoeuvre across the street to allow fire to be put on the German troops in the open. However, a small German attack in the centre of the objective delayed the manoeuvre and the smoke started to dissipate. Normally, I would have just waited and deployed more smoke, but at that moment a Stug appeared and threatened the two platoons. A withdrawal to the other side of the buildings would have been the appropriate action, but I was feeling lucky and believed the troops could get in under the smoke before taking fire. However, as the manoeuvre started, the last of the smoke blew away and the troops were exposed to enfilading fire from machine guns and rifles from the northeast end of the objective. The rattled troops which survived the slaughter withdrew and at that point the five points objective for all intents and purposes was lost. 
So to balance things out, let's look at how I took the centre block objective. Embattled remnants of 3rd Parachute Battalion and 2nd Platoon of the 1st Battalion have been squeezed into the southwest corner of the objective by a sustained advance from German infantry encroaching from the northeast. A three-man SMG team played a major role in taking this objective, causing multiple German casualties with a surprise attack, forcing the German lines back. The remaining Germans pulled further back, only now occupying the northeasternmost building on the objective. As I reoccupied the box-shaped building, lots of German infantry were spotted manoeuvring in the open on the five points objective. I poured in more troops from 1st Battalion's 1st and 2nd Platoon to take advantage of this and get some fire onto these uncovered troops. Shortly afterwards, I sensed that one of the assault guns on 5 points was now manoeuvring to engage the troops stacked up in the box-shaped building. This left me two options. One was to withdraw out of the Stug's line of fire. The second was to advance, which was riskier but also took the troops out of the Stug's line of fire. I opted to advance and quickly occupied the buildings to the north and to the east of the box-shaped building, allowing me to re-engage the German troops in the northeast building. With 3rd flight of G Squadron also able to put fire down, the Germans were caught in a crossfire and had little option but to fall back, where several were cut down. The 1st Battalion troops then occupied the now empty building, having pushed the Germans off and seizing fully the objective. I would like to say a very big thank you to my opponent Pericles. This was one of the most challenging combat mission battles I have ever played. Even though both of us would have fought on if we had had to, I think at the time of the ceasefire, both of us were psychologically exhausted from the battle, which is why we called it when we did. As always, if you like what you've seen, please leave a like Feel free to subscribe, leave a comment. I'm Josie Wales. War is hell. Thanks for watching.